If you're it's Emily Fox, so today's video is gonna be an unhaul video, my yearly unhaul. I usually do one every June, and I thought this year was going to be like my smallest one ever because I barely bought any books in last year because of the pandemic, I haven't been able to go to library sales. So I thought I won't have that many to talk about. But here I am with probably my biggest one. <laughs> I have about 60 books in this video to unhaul. Most of them I have read. Some of them I hate, so I want them gone. Some of them I just don't think I'm gonna reread them and I just want to get rid of them, make more space for whenever I am able to go back to buying books. And I just think some people will be happy to find them during another library sales. So, Let's get through them because, ooh. I'm just gonna grab and go because they're in no particular order. Um, I will eventually find the first one too. So Six of Crow duology, I'm getting rid of it. I do think this edition especially is pretty. I have read them. I will never reread them. I don't hate them. I just don't feel like I like them as much as everyone else. I do like the characters, but I feel like the magic system was underutilized in this one. And I feel like the story per se wasn't super interesting. Plus, I know some people will be super happy to find them during a next library sale because of the TV show, which was great. So it's time. It's time. I've kept them. I've read them like two, three years ago, and I've had them on my shelf since. And it's not happening. Well, actually, see, book one. Uh, let's continue with the same author, <laughs> Night House. Uh, I thought I was going to love this. My main complaint, essentially, with uh, or other work was that it was why so I thought that some of the issues that I had would be different in an adult book This was completely different. It's more like urban fantasy than straight-up fantasy, and I really didn't care for it. This was Not good the writing the story that scene. I No, the only character I liked was the side character. What was his name? Darlington I like him the only person worth reading the book for if <laughs> I really didn't like it anyway no point of going into details. It made it to my worst or most disappointing books of uh, last year or the year before. No, just no. Um, some books I'm getting rid of, even though I have overall enjoyed them, like The Diviners uh, by Liba Bray. I actually listened to that one as an audiobook, which I would recommend if you enjoy audiobooks because I do think it made the book, you know, come alive, music, multiple narrators. But I'm not going to reread this. I'm still planning on continuing the series, so it's like no hard feelings. It's just I don't need it on my shelf making space, spring cleaning, you know? I am finally admitting to myself that I'm never going to read more by Neil Gaiman. I did put him in my list of authors I'm not going to read more from, so I think it's time that I actually go ahead and get rid of the books that I have from him on my shelves. I thought I had on all these. That's why I was shocked when I saw them. Did I sneak them back in on my shelf or did I just never commit it? I don't know, but uh, American Gods and Never Wear. Everyone keeps telling me that, oh, you should try at least these, you're gonna like them. I don't like his style, like magical realism or whatever he writes. I, it doesn't work for me, so it's okay. Someone will be very excited to see them during a sale. Otherwise, they're just gonna keep gathering dust on my shelf. Like it's, some of these are so dusty. Um, this one, The Remedy, which I have read. This is a Y kind of dystopian world version of her world, which I read the first year I was on BookTube. I did overall enjoy it. It was weird you're following um this person who is part of a program to help with grief like she's pretending to be like people's kids it, weird but i overall did enjoy it but i mean it's been years and i'm not going to continue a series i don't think and i'm not going to reread it i don't know if i would like it as much as i did when i read it but it is what it is i have good memories of it but i don't need it on my shelf i have this series which was Going around on booktube when it was finally translated in English, uh, I have the French version, Les Fiancés de l'Hiver by uh, Christelle Labo. I don't love it, I don't hate it, you can see there's a the ton of dust. I need to uh, clean my shelves, which is the plan, I'm on hauling so I can do a reorganizing video. Anyway, um, it's why I had a few issues with the way the character was written, I feel like there was a bunch of vibes of like, not like other girls, which I, I don't care for that attitude, so eh, but um... I like the magic system, but I didn't really care for the romance, and I don't know yet if I'm going to continue the series or not. I'm counting on the fence, but I don't need to have the book on my shelf. I did actually read This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. I felt a bit on the fence about it. I have book two on my shelf. I think I'm just gonna unhaul both of them. No hard feelings, I just don't love it. So I'm trying to focus on books, only the books that I love. 
Uh, this one was fun to read last summer, <laughs> Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. Basically Twilight number five, uh, a ton of post-its. I actually vividly remember reading it in that week. It was raining all the time, just like thunderstorms I had clips of it in my uh, reading vlog. It was very like perfect mood and setting to read the book, but I'm not gonna keep it on my shelf. It was fun for what it was. It's not great literature, we all know. I did enjoy the little bit, uh, the bits of more information that we got in this one compared to the other ones. I don't know yet if I'm going to continue reading whatever she writes because there are rumors, but it wasn't great, but I knew it wasn't going to be great. But someone will be excited to see it there. I have a few classics, which I'm finally ready to uh, move on from. I feel like classics, I don't mind keeping them on my shelf if I felt a bit, if I have a pretty edition but I don't have pretty editions of these ones, so they can go. Um, Frankenstein, meh, I don't have any like loving feelings towards it or hating, I just, it is what it was. Um, Rebecca, which I felt underwhelmed by it, but I don't have a pretty edition, so I'm not keeping it. And then Withering Heights, which I am mad that people sold it to me as a romance, it is definitely not. Like it's more like two horrible people making their, each other's life horrible. But I don't have a pretty edition, so it can go. I feel like classic is definitely the, the section where I'm like really picky with editions. Otherwise, I don't really care. <laughs> uh, this one I did overall enjoy. This is Sorcery of Torns, which is a good YA fantasy book. It's a standalone, which I don't feel like there's a ton of. And uh, it's centered around a magical library, which is great. But I'm not going to reread this. My section of like YA fantasy is so full that like... I need to clean up some, so I've read it. Don't need to keep it. I thought I had gotten rid of this one, uh, A Court of Mist and Fury. I have uh, gotten rid of the first one and third one. I think I got, I kept this one because it was the best one of the three, but there's no point. I'll put the picture on the screen if I need to talk about it, but no. Someone will be happy, once again, to see that one. Oh, see, Shadow and Bone. I had done that too. I had kept the first one, gotten rid of the other two. I don't need to keep it. I know how I feel about it. Someone will want to read this series because of the TV show. I think the first one in that series is the best one. I like the magic system, like the magical school setting, but the romance sucked so much better in the TV show. Mal in the TV show is so much better. This one is a bit sad because I do have a pretty edition, but uh, I'm getting rid of the Farseer trilogy, so Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. I don't hate them, like I overall enjoy them, but it's just they're really not what I expected from the author. They're very, very character driven and I don't really care about the characters, so it's kind of hard to care. Um, so I've read the trilogy. I am not reading more from this author. There's no point of keeping them on my shelf. Someone will be super excited to see the, the whole trilogy and the pretty editions, so. I am also getting rid of authors that are problematic because I, if I really feel the need to talk about them, I'll put them on the screen. Plus, I'm not planning on reading more. Um, I have the other book already on the floor. Nevernight, the whole trilogy. So, God's Grave and Dark Dawn. Dark Dawn is definitely the weakest of the three. Um, I don't plan on reading more from the author. You can look up problematic stuff that he has done, written some books that are kind of racist, and make comments that were in interviews. So, eh. I had... I have read actually Life Like by him, which I really didn't care for, so I don't feel like I'm missing out. I feel like this might have been like a one hit wonder for me. I'm also not planning on reading more by Mark Lawrence. I really didn't care for this one, uh, The Girl and the Stars, which is a companion series to the Ancestor trilogy, which I am keeping just because I really enjoyed it, but I'm not planning on reading more from the author. So the three that I have on my shelf will be gone. Uh, I have Prince of Fools, the Wheel of Whatever and Prince of Torns, which I think actually these two are related. Um, I've heard not great things about these other series, so I don't feel like I'm really missing out. And yeah, this wasn't it for me. Ooh, one more classic that I'm not going to keep because I don't like this edition. This is the picture of Dorian Gray. I did overall enjoy it. There's a one chapter that everyone hates, myself included, but it's an interesting story. I just have this edition that I don't care for, so... I only have one shelf for my classics and it's like spilling over, so not a big loss. Uh, I have a few books that are very popular but I don't really care for. <sighs> the Book Teeth, I know, I know. 
historical fiction, I feel like a lot of the really popular ones, I'm kind of just meh about them, especially World War II. That's why I'm like saying I'm not going to read more World War II books because like obviously it's always sad, but like I just don't really care for the stories. So I feel bad. So <laughs> didn't like that. Uh, where's the other one? So uh, same thing with this one, All the Light We Cannot See by Antine Doer. I... <sighs> I actually did a clean up with my rainbow shelf, which for anyone who doesn't know, top, the ones I have read, bottom, I haven't. So I did clean up, I'm gonna have to refill it, but we know it's coming, reorganizing video. But uh, a few that were on that shelf, uh, we have Simon versus D, Homo sapien agenda. It's fine, just not my cup of tea. I know some people have pointed out that there are some problematic stuff in there. Eh, someone will be happy to find it. Uh, this one was in there just because of the color, let's be real, not because I love it. Uh, the girl with all the gifts, I used to love uh, post-apocalyptic books. I feel like I'm a little bit over it. Probably just taking a break. break. Eventually we'll go back, but this one is definitely not a good one. The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. Not my favorite by him. The topic is interesting. Uh, you're basically following like the rest of the people. Like There's a hero story and then just the normal people. But I feel like he kind of cheated towards the end and it just... I mean, boring people are boring. It is what it is, but interesting topic. My Lady Jane, I feel like this one was also there because it's purple, so it was great for my shelf. And the cover is actually pretty. For some reason, it works for me. I don't usually like people on my covers. I think it's because it's hidden. <laughs> but um, it was fine, didn't love it, didn't hate it, never continued the series. I'm still kind of thinking about it, following, you know, retelling of uh, Jane's, historical Jane's. <laughs> I did read and overall enjoyed The Huntress, but at the same time, I feel like half the story didn't really care as much for it. So I feel like it sounds like I'm really not liking historical fiction, but I think I'm just really picky with the ones that I do like. And this one was fine. I liked uh, whoever nobody else liked. Nina? I liked her. I didn't care for the rest. I had kept uh, to all the boys I've loved before because... I thought the first book was cute, like it's a Y contemporary romance, which is really usually not what I love, but it was cute, but then I got rid of book two because it was the most pointless thing ever and never got around to reading the third one, never will. So there's no point of keeping it. If I want to talk about it in a video, I can just put it on the screen. I never finish Outlander, never will. I feel like if I want to continue, I'll just watch the, watch the TV show because it's more pleasing that way. Um, Meh. Life After Life, which is one of my favorite premises, someone reliving their lives over and over again. Uh, whenever I do that video, I'll just put it on the screen. Plus, there's a prettier edition with the fox on it. Like, why do I not own the one with the fox on it? Uh, so, no point of keeping it. I've read it. Overall, I enjoyed it. Historical fiction, kind of. So, <laughs> even World War II. <laughs> but it's the twist of someone reliving their life that I enjoyed. Recently read How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. Meh. Uh, I didn't hate it. I just didn't enjoy it whatsoever. So I'm kind of a little bitter because I've enjoyed some of his other books a lot. So meh. And the Radleys, I never finished it. Never will. I am getting so good at being cutthroat and just getting rid of books. The Unseen World, I had heard great things about it and I had been looking forward to reading it for a long, long, long time. And Got around to reading it. I liked the beginning, but didn't care for the rest. And frankly, it's kind of a meh, forgettable book in my opinion. So I'm getting rid of They Will Die at the End because everyone will want to get that book when they find it. I feel like I've seen it everywhere on Book Talk. To me, it wasn't a bad book. Like, it's a YA coming of age sci fi, kinda. And I didn't love it, didn't hate it. It just, I don't need it on my shelf. Someone else will be super happy. 2001, I feel like I wanted to keep it for some videos that I want to do about classic sci fi, but once again, I can just put the picture on the screen. There's no need for me to keep it. Um, I love some parts of it, really didn't care for other parts. It was so weird. The book is divided in like, what, like five sections or something. The style is so different depending on which section it is. So it was like back and forth between loving it and really not. So I don't know how overall I feel about this book really. One more classic, Little Women. I'm including it here because I'm planning on using the pages to do something pretty, uh, probably. And I just never finished it. I watched this movie, it was great, but I have no attachment to it. It's not a pretty edition, so I'm gonna do decoration with it. Theft of Swords, which I have read. I've, the first, it's two books in one. The first one is not great. The second one is better. Uh, it's definitely like, kind of feels like w w wish fulfillment. You know, whenever it's a 
male character written clearly by a male and it's like wanting to be funny and cool and it's just coming off of it. Uh, there were a few cringy scenes in the beginning of the first book and like most female characters are prostitutes, which why is it always the case in those older uh, fantasy? It's not even old. What is it? 2011. Whew. Um, I do have the second book on my shelf, so eventually I will read it, but there's no need for me to keep this one. Uh, this one I kept because... <laughs> Great on the rainbow shelf. Uh, thanks for the trouble. This is a YA contemporary magical realism. I don't know. But this is the perfect example of a book that you can read like in one day. It's fairly short. It's 200 something pages. It's definitely like a manic pixie dream girl, but I overall didn't mind it. I think I read it at the perfect time, but I'm not going to reread this. I don't know why it's on my shelf. So I still have so many to go through. Um, it's kind of a funny story. I had this on my shelf for the longest time and finally got around to reading it this year and uh, um, I guess maybe YA book. You're following this teen who goes uh, to a hospital because he's suicidal and I'm fully aware that the author did eventually kill himself so definitely um, and, it's based, and it's based on his life so however there are like a few quotes that made me cringe which like um I don't like to spend money. Every time I spend it, I feel like I'm being raped. And then literally on the last page, there's another the one, he's listing things that he can do with his life. And then he's saying like, laugh, hold, walk, skip. Okay, it's gay, whatever, skip. Which, 2006, I guess people still said that, but meh, I just don't want it on my shelf. The Kite Runner, no hard feelings. I did overall enjoy it. I just will never read this because my poor heart. That plus that shelf is full. Like I have like a shelf just under uh, this one that is like historical fiction, um, romance, contemporary, basically everything that I don't own or read a ton of. So it's very, very full. So I'm getting rid of the ones that I've read unless I love them. I did overall enjoy that one though, but mm. So far you've seen that I've read most of these. This one I haven't, will never do that because I bought this before I knew much about the author, all I knew was, oh, nonfiction about space stuff, that's cool, and now I know he's a piece of shit. So, um, no, I don't want that on my shelf. Like, if someone were to see this on my shelf and think that I like Elon Musk, I would not want that. So, he's on my shit list. <laughs> Anyone else has a shit list? Like, if someone raves about him, or Joe Rogan, or uh, Jordan Peterson, or like Ben Shapiro, I know we will never get along. I just automatically know. So <laughs> don't want that on my shelf. The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. I did overall enjoy um, Big Little Lie. I tried this one, could not finish it. Could not read past a couple chapters, to be honest. So no. Uh, you, which everyone has been reading because of the TV show, which I did watch a couple episode. I did overall enjoy it, but I don't need to have the book on my shelf. Again, if I want to talk about it, I'll put it on the screen. It's a few things are really good, a few things are really bad, so I had this on my shelf for the longest time with Malice, finally got around to reading it, and it's so. Another post-apocalyptic book, Swan Song, which I feel like everyone raves about. I did overall enjoy it, but not as much as the hype, I feel like, but someone will be happy to finally see it for a dollar at a library sell. So Before I Go to Sleep, which was my first time reading a book by this author, although I've seen the movie based on his book, and he's always weird with female bodies, I feel like, but overall did enjoy it. It's pretty messed up, but I'm not going to reread this. And once again, I have a limited amount of space for my uh, mystery thrillers. They already have like four shelves or something, three, four shelves. So I need more space for new ones. Speaking of which, I also read The Troop, which I did overall enjoy very much like kids on an island and horrible shit happening. <laughs> Um, so if you like horror, it's not a bad one. I'm just not going to reread it. Uh, I'm getting rid of some Stephen King. He has done and said some things, but uh, I have like so many of his books. I've been wanting to read so many because everyone is always raving about him, but I feel like ultimately I never end up loving his books. So um, I'm getting rid of some of the ones that I have read, like it, because if I want to talk about it, I can put the picture on the screen and I'm not going to reread this. It is way too freaking long. Uh, and there's, the ending sucks, and there's that scene towards the end. No. Uh, same thing with The Stand. I've already done my video about post-apocalyptic books. I feel like I'm finally feeling free to remove these books from my shelf. So the, the, the beginning is definitely the best part in this book. 
And um, I have Dr. Sleep because I started the first book, which I can't remember the name of. I have like the yellow creepy edition and I never finished it. Eventually, maybe, but I feel like at this point I will never get around to reading book two. So let's make some space. One book that I'm getting rid of because I was sent a prettier edition <laughs> and there's no need for me to have both on my shelves and it is Contact by Carl Sagan. So this is the edition that I had. They sent me this one, which is really, really pretty. So I will keep this one. I'll get rid of this one. Someone else can find it for cheap. And I'm also getting rid of these two books. I am keeping my uh, Harry Potter collection just because of memories. Uh, but I hated these two, so why why do I keep this? Like, this is even ugly. At least this is a pretty edition, but I didn't care for the movies, didn't care for the screenplay, and this just straight up sucks, so they can go. So that was a lot of books that are leaving my shelves. I now have more space for more books. I do want to reorganize my shelves because they are so messy now, and um, they, they deserve to look prettier, so whenever I can finally buy books, they can come to a nice home, you know? Look how much more empty, empty? Look how empty they're now looking. Um, my Brennan Sanderson doesn't count. I just did a video and I got, I used a couple of these, but like everything else is looking so empty compared to what it usually does. Like, look, a couple are gone. It's kind of nice. Very happy, very freeing. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me in the comment section what books you have been unhauling or you will be unhauling during the spring because I want to know. Um, if you have any feelings about these books, let me know, obviously, and we can talk about it in the comment section. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out, and I will see you very soon in an upcoming video. Bye.